to see you. You're very, very welcome. If you're listening tomorrow or next week, whenever it is, you're very, very welcome. It's all very weird with the mass, but we're still here to worship the Lord. It's great to have Pastor Mark and Hayes and all the family in. You're very, very welcome. Whoop, whoop. Oh, either clap or throw him a fish or something. I don't know. That was terrible welcome, but you're very, very welcome. Everybody, you are, you're so well. Oh, come on, what are we doing here? Let's have some order. You are welcome. I wish I hadn't done that. But uh, you are so welcome this morning. And even with the Mass, we're going to worship the Lord. Um, I'm allowed to sing. You're not allowed to sing. You can hum behind your masks. But you're not allowed to sing. But it is great to have you here. We're going to just open up in prayer. And then I'm going to ask you just to take a few moments to lay your week before the Lord, and we're going to worship the Lord this morning. Father, we thank you that you're here right among us. Lord Jesus, we are here because you love us, and Lord, we, we love you this morning. We publicly say we love you. Father, would you have your way? Would you open our hearts and our minds to what you want to say? In Jesus' wonderful name, be glorified. Amen. Now, you just take a few moments, lay in your week, maybe asking the Holy Spirit, how can you bless him this morning? We always get into the habit of saying, Lord, would you bless me? But you can bless him this morning in your actions, in the way that you respond. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Well, if you want to stand, you want to sit, you want to, Elizabeth, if you want to lie down or whatever, you're, you're more than welcome to just get in the presence of the Lord. And we're going to sing nothing else. Nothing else will do. Thanks, guys. We're here to worship Jesus. That's what's important today. Just feel comfortable in this place. Don't be on ceremony. Just be right at home. Caught up in your presence. Holy Spirit, fall right in this place. I just wanna see here at your Nothing else, 
nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Yes, nothing else. Nothing else will do. I just want you. Nothing else. Nothing else will do. Just want you, oh Lord. No one compares to you. Almighty God. Thank you, Father. We worship you, Almighty God. Thank you, Lord. Great are you, Lord. Give life, you are love. 
our praise to you. For you are holy. Jesus. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing in grace. over our city, over your street, over our community. We'll shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. Come on, sing it out. And all the earth will shout your praise. your voices while you lift your voices and praise. Lift your voice of the Lord. You can praise the smile. The great is our God. The great is our Lord. Yes, Father. Father. Holy Spirit, move in this place.
our Lord. Great is our Lord. No one compares to Almighty God. Nobody can come close. Nobody can challenge his, his rule because he reigns on high. Thank you, Lord. Take your seats for me. It's great to hum to the Lord in church, isn't it? But uh, we're going to get into the Word of God this morning. And uh, I'm continuing our series. It's time to have mustard seed faith, seeing the impossible become possible. And I want to ask you, and I know that you, if, if you're not being here regularly, if you're just tuning in, but if you have been, you know I'm going to ask you this question in this series. What have you done this week with that mustard seed of faith? What have you done? Have you given it to God? And how is God showing up? Or have we just discarded that seed again, not give it any thought? Our series is based on when the disciples came down the mountain and said, why could we not see the demons come out of that boy? Jesus challenged them and says, if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can say to that mountain, move from here to there and nothing will be impossible for you. What have you done with that mustard seed of faith? Because God says, all I need is that mustard seed of faith to show up and do something new in your life. If you've got your Bibles, go to Acts 2. In fact, we read Acts 2 last week. It was the, the move of the Spirit and Pentecost Sunday. But I want you to go to Acts 2. You'll read this in Joel 2, 28 as well. But Acts 2, 17 to 21. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And may God add his blessing unto his word. That was Acts 2, 17 to 21, if you're taking notes. Just have to bear with the kids this morning until we can open up. But uh, kids, you're very, very welcome. I want to tell you this this morning, that, that we are created, that we were formed to be carriers of dreams and visions. Do you, do you believe that this morning? That God created us to have dreams and to have visions. God's kingdom is full of dreamers. It's the overspill of the Spirit of God in our lives. The spirit of wisdom and revelation releases dreams all over our city, in your street, in your community. You're part of what God wants to do in the plan of changing the story of this city. Over the last number of weeks, I've talked about how we're trusted rulers, how we're ambassadors, how we have his authority, how we can carry him into places. And he wants us to dream and he wants us to have visions over our city, over our street, over our neighbours. Christ ambassadors sealed with his approval. When we are ambassadors, nobody can get in the way if we've got his approval. So if God has got you set up for something to do something, nobody can get in the way because you've got the seal of his approval. The other week I read that we are co-heirs in Christ. Is anybody with me this morning? We've got a full room, but it seems very quiet in this place. You know how this works. The more amens I get, the shorter I am. There we go. I knew I'd get two from the PA box. But we're Christ's ambassadors. We carry these roles full of the Holy Spirit. But we are called to rewrite the story of our street. We are called to rewrite the story of our community. We are called to rewrite the story of our city. Across our cities, across our towns, in this room, if you're watching wherever you're from, there's always a story. And it's always easy to tell the negative story about our city. But I want us to be a church, I want us to be a people. We are called by God to tell a different story. To tell a great story about our cities, the places that we live. You don't know how many times I tell people that, that our beaches, that where our lighthouses are, is Sunderland's best kept secret. What, you live in Sunderland? You what? Yeah, but we've got great beaches, blue flag beaches, we've got lighthouses, we've got... What, in Sunderland? Yes, in Sunderland, and if you're watching in Sunderland, it's time we told a different story. 
and we can dream and we can have visions and we can tell a positive story. <laughs> can you tell I'm passionate this morning? When God wants to change the story of a city, when he wants to change your street, your community, he wants you to dream and have visions over it. He wants you to give you those dreams. So you can't just have this dream and say, is that of God or is that the cheese I had for tea? He wants you to act full of the Holy Spirit. You've heard me talk about it the last few weeks. There's keys to the kingdom of God. These dreams and visions are some of the keys to advancing the kingdom of God. I'm not interested in advancing new springs. I'm, advancing, I'm interested in advancing the kingdom of God. And he'll take care of new springs. We've got to advance the kingdom of God. It's not that bad, is it, Gordon? How many ten minutes in? God wants to change the story of the city. He summons dreams. He declares, in essence, let there be artists. Let them create stunning works of beauty and evoke wonder. Let there be businessmen and women. Let them see the people beyond their profit and induce, introduce ideas that steward life. Let there be families. Let there be glory reside in them and among them. And let them be marked with, with the honour of God. Isn't it amazing? I'm not doing this because they're here. This is one family serving the Lord. That's remarkable in the days that we live in. Let's pray that our families are following the Lord. That they're full for the God that we serve, the one that we love. I'm praying this is what happens when we dream visions and we have things over our city. Let there be medics and let them pioneer breakthroughs, advances that trample on the head of disease. Just don't want to tell a story about how oh, we've got nice beaches, that's important. I want to tell stories how we've got the best medics, how we've got the best education system, how we've got businessmen and women who can make money but want to put back into the community and bless people. That's the kind of people I want to talk about. That's the kind of city I want to talk about. This dreaming over the city is what believers are supposed to do. More than that, it's, our, it's in our spiritual DNA. I believe it's in our spiritual DNA. God promised this community would be dreamer and visionaries. You saw that in the scripture that I read in Acts 2. This is what I honestly believe. God is, is raising up believers all over the country who move beyond the needs of the church, begin to dream over their cities, dream over their towns, dream how they're going to shape a city, change that story of their street, because we can't win a city if we can't talk to our street. And we can't change a street if we're not prepared to then move on to talk to our community or can't win a city until we walk to our community, we've got to start in our streets and that's where our Dr. Street campaign comes in and bless a business. And more, I'll speak on that more next week. God promised his community would be of dreamers and visionaries. God promises I will pour out my spirit and all flesh and dreamers will arise. I want to say over you this morning, dreamers arise. Visionaries arise. Wake up to what God has put in your heart and in your mind. If you're listening online, wake up, oh sleeper. The church is in exciting times and we are the church, not the building. It's time to advance the kingdom of God. I don't believe that this pandemic has slowed us up. This is about us refocusing so we can attack for the kingdom of God. So we can take the ground off the enemy. And you know what's going to happen? The devil doesn't like you taking ground off him. He's going to put up a fight. So the moment you give him that mustard seed of faith, prepared for a fight. But you know what our word? Do you know what the Bible says? That we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. I need to get back on my notes because there's lots I want to say. But we are called to be dreamers and visionaries. Why? Because God trusts us, believe it or not, God trusts us with his dreams and with his visions. I, I look in the mirror and I think, God, why the heck would you choose to use me? He says, because there's nobody else. Why does he choose you and keep making mistakes and keep sinning and keep going your own way at times? Because he likes to work with those kind of people. We're in good company. He's got nobody else to work with. So he says, I've got to trust you. My trusted rulers, my ambassadors, my co-heirs to carry those dreams and those visions. We'll no longer be limited to what you could do in your own power. A dream will ignite within you that comes from the Holy Spirit. 
Young men and women dreaming beyond the generation and old men and women live for more than what they've seen. That's what I'm seeing coming. That's what's going to come. The hallmark of the Spirit resting on us is dreams that are bigger than us. If you've got a dream and it's not bigger than you, if you've got a dream and you're not scared about it, if you've got a dream in God and you feel he can handle it, it's not big enough. Because if we're going to be kingdom-minded, we have to dream bigger dreams and visions. To see the kingdom come. To see his will be done. This is what happened though for so long as Christians we have fallen for this lie from the devil that we need to distrust our own dreams and our own visions. For too long we've become aware of the doctrine of original sin and discovery of the original design. Did you hear me there? That we come wrapped up in original sin, but we actually need to get wrapped up in, in the discovery of original design from Creator God. Therefore, we assumed if we desire orgerated in our hearts, this is what's happened, that it's probably not in line with the Word of God. The devil has told us that when you've got dreams and visions from God that you've held, you're not good enough for God to use you. You're not hearing right, you're not. Well, I want to challenge that. that that's a lie from the devil that, the, that God says, I want to partner with you. Hallelujah. I've got dreams and visions that are going to affect the kingdom of God. Don't believe what the devil is saying to you. He trusts you. If he's giving you a dream and a vision and it tallies with his will for the kingdom, it will come to pass. Trust that he's made you a co heir Trust that you're his ambassador. Ambassador has rights. I've told you this before. You can walk into places. It opens doors and Christ says, I'm opening doors, I'm giving you rights that no man can challenge. I am super excited about where the kingdom of God is going. And we're part, we're right in the middle of that. The devil will tell you it's probably not good enough. It's not from God's heart. So we deny those desires downplay them, downsizing our dreams. It seems the, the right thing to do, doesn't it? And it becomes frustrating living that way. And I don't believe that a New Testament lifestyle with an Old Testament mindset is going to get the job done. You see, we need to start walking in the authority that Christ has given us. Waking up to the call that he's give you a dream and a vision that actually you're responsible to take that dream and vision and do something with it. God is all powerful, all knowing that he could go just like that and change things. But he holds back because he wants to partner with us. Because he wants us to experience his glory working out in the worlds that we live in. Some of you still are not sure what I'm talking about. That's okay. One day it'll click. I want to go to Ephesians. Paul addresses this dilemma. Ephesians 2, 1 to 7. And I've got a lot I want to go through, so I'm just trying to motor through it. You can re-listen on the tape later on or on the DVD or whatever we've got. Facebook. Ephesians 2, 1 to 7. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins in which you used to live when you followed the ways of the world and the rule of the kingdom of the air. The Spirit is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh, following its desires and thoughts like the rest. We were, by nature, deserving of wrath. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even more. And even when we were dead in our transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated, with, seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus, in order that in the coming ages he might show the imparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. A lot of scripture, but you can reread that. The Living Bible puts it like this. I like the Living Bible. I like the message at times because it helps us understand it in a, in a way that we can get hold of it. It says this, you went along with the crowd and you were just like all the others. You were just like everyone else. You didn't understand your uniqueness. You lived according to the pattern of this world without any revelation that God had put a unique desire and a unique dream within you. Instead of forming dreams that transformed a street, a community, a city, we have followed dreams that were in the world. 
You see, we fall into this trap of seeing other people's desires. We fall into this trap of seeing other people's dreams around us. And, and we say, do you know what? They must be right. I'm going to go with that dream. And I'm not saying all the dreams and aspirations and the visions that are around us are wrong. But God has called you to have your own dreams and visions, not just to be part of the norm. To stand out from the crowd. If we go along with the norm, we just fall into the world routine. The world dreams, the world visions. As Christians, as followers of Jesus, as the ones that carry the hope, which is Jesus, we've got to have a different story. We've got to sometimes go against the flow of what the world says is the norm. And you have these dreams and you have these visions to do that. You see, we've got to get out of this trap of our dreams that have been rooted in comparison rather than compassion. I need to compare my dream to that person's dream and maybe it's not measuring up to because they're doing great things. It doesn't matter what they're dreaming or they're visionary. It's important what you are dreaming in God and what vision he's given you. So move from comparing yourself because who are you comparing yourself to? It's you who's got to stand before God. It's you who's got to answer for the things that you do, not the person that you're comparing yourself with. And take your dreams Take your visions and, and move into compassion. Not comparison. When we go along with a crowd, we're just like all the others. Making it impossible to live expansively and creatively. We got locked into the outcomes of opinions of others. Just want to touch on this. This is an original sin. Simply following the trend instead of setting the standard. For much of the time, our dreams are rooted in tradition, not revelation. Let me just go back to Ephesians 2. But God, who is rich in mercy, gave us back our lives again. God made us alive in Christ. Amen? Because of Jesus, we are alive. Because of Jesus, we can change the story. Because of Jesus, we can walk in and dream big dreams and visions over our city. Not just dream them, but see them come to pass. Be part of a great story. That Christ wants to put us in. Now in Christ we've been drafted into a greater dream. That leads us beyond ourselves into God's pattern and plan. Did you hear that? We've been drafted into a greater dream because of Christ. You might not want to be part of it. But if you've given your life to Christ. He's drafted you into something bigger. We're called to be bigger. To live differently. Leads us beyond ourselves into a God's pattern and plan for bringing all things under heaven and earth, under one head, even Christ. We've been drawn into a dream that is creative, redemptive, expansive and generous. We need to get hold of this. We need to just understand this for a moment. We are released from the pattern of this world to create a pattern for this world. Are you hearing what I'm saying there? I'm going to say it again because you need to write it down. It's important that you write this down. We are released, this is because of Christ, what he did on the cross and rising again. We are released from the pattern of this world to create a pattern for this world. He says, I'm getting hold of the old, that is no more. You are a new creation in me. And you're going to be part of making a pattern for this world. It's quite impressive, isn't it, that God chooses us. Mumbling, bumbling, messing up all the time. But he says, I choose you. Let me just stop there. This isn't on my notes. But somebody needs to hear online or in this room. God says, I choose you. Maybe people have pushed you aside. Maybe you've not got that promotion. Maybe that person is not wanting to be your friend anymore or whatever the situation is. God's declaring and shouting over your life, I choose you. And if he's choosing you, nobody else matters. That's a side note. Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, they're shouting over your life, I choose you. When nobody else is watching, I choose you. How are we doing for time? Six minutes past the 11. I believe this in Christ, the dream that has been there all along, even though it may have been buried under disappointment, difficulty of life, suddenly comes alive, alive with his life. This is because of Jesus. His design fills our spiritual DNA. Yet without awareness of the dreams God 
has wired into our spiritual DNA, we tend to reach for what has been instead of what could be. We need to be a people that, not what was being, but what could be. What is the possibility if I actually stepped out with this mustard seed of faith? I believe this passionately. We're going to get to heaven. And he's going to show us many things that we missed out on because we didn't step out. I believe he's going to bless us. But son, daughter, if you just gave me that mustard seed of faith, if you just pushed in or stepped out in that situation, look at what I would have opened for you. How far away are we from missing out what God has for us because we don't just push in? We've been called to not repeat history. We've been called to rewrite history. No, we can't go and rewrite 1066. I get that. But we can write the end of the story. History has not been written yet. Moving forward, we can write that end of the story. And you as Christians, you as ambassadors of Christ, co can change that history. Over the city of Sunderland, we can change the history. Man wants to go one way, government officials and red tape and want to go one way, but God says, no, 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 you partner with me with your dreams and visions and it will go another way. We will see the kingdom of God advanced. Many of us settle with the dreams of others, but it's time we were courageous dreamers. I want to challenge you again. Wake up, become courageous dreamers. In the field, in the area that you live in, wherever you influence, where I can't influence, and there's a lot more intelligent people in this room than me. Wake up. Get hold of your dreams and visions and see them change your workplace or the place that you do business, where you volunteer where you're retired and where you go about your business. We're called to be courageous dreamers. What do you want to see in the education system? What do you want to see in the police? What do you want to see in the medical profession? What do you want to see on the caravan home? What do you want to see in the places, in the school and wherever you go? What do you want to see? Start dreaming. Start having visions. Start partnering with the Holy Spirit. Because he wants to bring change. What do you want to see in the student places? Because you're not at your places just to earn money. Yes, it helps because it pays the bills. But you're called by God to be different. You're called by God to dream, have visions and make a difference. You can do all this because of Jesus. I keep telling you, hope has got a name and that name is Jesus. And we need to carry Jesus into every situation. Dream, have visions, wake up, be courageous. This is what happens. Courageous dreamers refuse to settle for a little more of what everybody else has. They press on to introduce those things that have never been seen. They push on. I'm very privileged that under Paul Hudson, I get to speak into ministers' lives in the area on his apostolic team. But what am I believing for those pastors? Not the norm. I want to be a different leader how I speak into their lives. I don't want to fall into a pattern of things that have happened before and some things are good, but things have to change. I want our workplaces for people to be inspired, to be lifted up, to know that they can come to you when there's times of darkness in their lives. They might not know this Jesus, but you can bring hope because you carry Jesus. Is it ridiculous enough to think that Alan, who's top of his game, could invent something in the the medical profession that would change the world, change a nation? I don't think that's impossible to think. Or whoever in the field that you're in. It's not about money. It's about getting hold of your authority in Christ. It's getting hold of how Christ is putting dreams and visions on you. Some of you have carried dreams and visions for many, many years and you're not sure you're going to see them. Well, I want to say this. Hold on to them and it's time to start giving birth. What are you talking about, pastor? I'm six foot five. How am I supposed to give birth? Give birth to what God has given you. Let no man, no red tape, no devil tell you any different. Why can't your school be different? Why can't your police force be different? Why can't the medical situation be different? Girls on the back, why can't your schools? 
be different. They can be. Because we can tell a different story. So easy at work, isn't it, to slag, to put down. How many times have we actually said, you know what? They're doing an amazing job there. Because of you, this has changed. Why can't it change in Oxlow Close, where you work at and where it's rough? It can. Sean, when you're playing that horrendous music in nightclubs, people can still be changed for Jesus. Dream. Do you need to take that, Les? Oh, wait. It's a bummer when that happens in church, isn't it? It's all right, love. It's okay, take time. It's time for us to dream big. It's time for us to wake up and be courageous. Do you know what? Let me tell you this story. <laughs> this is a, I'm really, I love this story. Let me just say this. Courageous dreamers emerge through immersion in the presence. However, you can't stay there. You can't just have this dream and a vision. You've got to engage. So C.S. Lewis, anybody heard of C.S. Lewis? He wrote a few books. Not that famous, only joking. So C.S. Lewis is sitting in an Oxford chapel, soaking in the presence, expressing his desires before God. And Lewis exits the church. There's a door directly opposite. And on that door, there's a lion face etched into it. And beside it, there's little sculptures of Mr. Tumnus. C.S. Lewis walks out of church to begin his ordinary everyday life, having connected and celebrated with God, he looks at the door and a whole new world is created, is born. And suddenly he's writing book after book that will change child's lives for generations and generations. His contemplation in the sanctuary led to imagination for society. It happened as he came out of church. Oh, when he was intimate with the Lord. Not looking for something that would change his life and many other people's lives. Just intimate with the Holy Spirit, intimate with Jesus going about his business and he comes out and this thing changes. Is there anybody in this room who has not heard of C.S. Lewis? There's my point. And I could do that in every other room when people know the legacy of C.S. Lewis. And there he is, being intimate with God. And if we want our dreams and our visions to come out, we've got to be intimate with God. We've got to partner with the Holy Spirit. You hear me say this most weeks, that intimacy is key. You see, we get into our heads that sacrifice is better than obedience. Obedience is key. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Do what the Lord is telling you. Because if you do what the Lord is telling you, he will open the doors. If you put it first, all these things will be added. Isaiah talks about, if you obey me, you will eat the best from the land. Now, that stuck with me because I thought he was talking about food. But it goes way past the food. He said, if you obey me. You will eat the best from the land. I don't believe it's just talking about food. I believe that's talking about education. That's talking about police forces. That's talking about medication. In time, in whatever it is, you will eat the best from the land if you obey me. Let's get back to obeying him. Oh, wow. One day I need to start looking at these notes properly, shouldn't I? Be the Holy Spirit is on the move. It very much can be part of that. See, the dreams of God, I believe this passionately, are just beyond our church's doors. Not just in Sunderland, but your church doors, wherever you are. Just beyond our church doors, the dreams and visions are there, right there. I believe we can have dreams and visions downloaded from the Lord. But I honestly believe it comes out of intimacy. In my experience, by walking, by seeing, experiencing, getting among people. And the Holy Spirit starts prompting something in my heart. Can you do something about this? Can you Can you help these people? Everything we've done in this church is not because of my ego. I honestly felt the Lord has said, there's a need, now you need to do something with it. You keep asking for us to be a blessing in this community, Pastor Nathan. You keep asking this. You keep saying you want to be right in the mix of it. I'm giving it to you. How are you going to respond? I've told you this already since last year. 
just this church, we gave 12,500 meals out. Our church, that's you giving and being part of this. We've caught hold of something that God says, there's a need, there's a dream and a vision. That's a dream and a vision. That community shop. That isn't about me. Oh, look, we've got a shop. That's about God spoke to me. I was sharing this morning with Nathan and Bethan. That wasn't going to be a shop. But God spoke to me and said, people are in dire needs in your church, in your city, on your street. They need food and they need dignity. So for two pounds, you can have ten items. And there's no charity there. You pick what you want. And we've got to give, as people of the church, we've got to give our communities, our street, dignity. I believe we're called to do that. Opportunities are all around us. How are we going to respond to those opportunities? And hear me right, we can't solve everything. And what I would say is, get hold of what the Lord is saying on that one thing and then do it well. Excellence isn't about being perfe- uh, having perfection. Excellence is doing the best you can with everything and resources that you've got for that situation. I'm for excellence. I'm not for perfection. Get hold of one thing and allow the Holy Spirit to partner you to bring change into that situation. The dreams of God live just beyond those doors of the church. But we need to immerse ourselves in his desires and in his presence. Psalm 37, 3 to 6. We're nearly there. Time's ticking. Psalm 37, 3 to 6. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord. Here's the key verse. And he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust him and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn. Your vindication like the noonday sun. He wants to give us the desires of our hearts. If they tally with his will, with his understanding, with how he wants to play things out, he will give you the desires of the heart. You see that in Samuel, uh, sorry, in Solomon. I'm not going to go into Solomon, but Solomon is this king and he's honouring and obeying the Lord. There's an interesting word, that obey word again. He's obeying the Lord. And God says to him, what do you want? Now, if God said to you, what do you want? I'm sure some of you are going to go, could you make me rich? Could you give me more kids? Could you... That's not my prayer. (laughs) Lord, I'm speaking hypothetical there. I'm not praying for more kids. But what's your prayer? What are you saying? God's saying, what do you want? Solomon is wise enough to say, I want wisdom. Do you know why he wanted wisdom? Because he saw people that needed to be released into their dreams. He called for wisdom because he needed to govern right and with God's holy order. God says, you know what, son? You've caught my attention now. Go away and read it. You've caught my attention now. I'm going to grant you the desires of your heart because they tell you because you are loving on your people. You're loving in the city the way that I love. If our desires tally up with the will of God, he will give us the desires of our hearts. And those desires don't have to be about advancing the kingdom of God. He wants us to be blessed. And I had a desire for the certain house that I wanted. I said to Jen, and we've done this for many years, we had to be very clear what we wanted. What house do you want? Well, do you want so many bathrooms? Do you want so many bedrooms? Do you want... So we prayed what we wanted. I believe when we pray and we give things to God we've got to tell him what we want so he knows what to deliver so we prayed about this house and we got everything on our list that we wanted do you want in that man, that woman to come into your life are you praying for them what's on the list two eyes, a pulse or are we going a little bit deeper we want them to be full of God Want to be a dreamer, a visionary, somebody that's going to have your back, somebody that's going to propel you forward? Pray on the list. But also, if you're waiting for somebody, this is a side, if you're waiting for somebody to come into your life, are you the person they're praying for? Trying to be the best Christian, trying to be the best giver, the best whatever it is. Solomon asked for wisdom and he got it. 
God wants to give us the desires of our hearts. There's so much more I want to say, but time is gone. I want to challenge you this morning to wake up to your dreams and the visions that God has given you. Because there's dreams and visions that God has given you that I can't outwork. There's dreams and visions that God has given you that our community, that your street, that are desperate to get hold of. And only you can open that up for the Lord. Dreams and visions he's given you. Maybe he's given you dreams and visions many years. Maybe you need to get that old notebook out. Maybe you need to spend some time with him and say, Lord, would you resharpen that in my mind? He's called us to partner with him in dreams and visions. Do you know what my prayer is over this city? This is my dream, that we would have the best businessmen and women. Not just making money, but blessing the community. Blessing the people that work for them. Giving people opportunities who haven't got work. I'm praying over the city that we have the best medical facilities. The best medical people. The best police force. The best beaches. The best restaurants. The best artists. All coming out of this place called Sunderland. Why? Because God wants us to have dreams and visions. He wants our city to prosper. I don't just want to pray that Sunderland has the best football team. <laughs> Got to do a lot of praying and fasting there, Nate. <laughs> but why not? Not because he supports Sunderland. Why don't we have the best football team? Why can't we? How do we dream? How do we vision that? How do we make that come into place? I don't know, maybe change them to Liverpool or something. But do you see my point is, why can't we have the best footballers coming out of here? Why can't we have the best artists, the best people in education, in the police force, in the medical? Why not? God has given us dreams, he's given us visions, and he wants us to partner with him in seeing those dreams and visions come into place. I'm going to stop there. Are you catching my heart this morning? That you are here for more than just being a pew sitter. My job, believe it or not, and this is going to probably go against me, my job isn't to try and fill this church. My job isn't to try and get you to do the things of this church. Please hear me. My job is to empower you to be all you can be in God. To be all you can be in God. I want to be kingdom minded. I don't want to be Nathan Weaver or New Springs minded. My job is to empower you to be and dream, have visions and go after those dreams and visions. To be everything you can be in God. That's what I believe my heart is. That's what I believe my job is. The kingdom of God is calling us to dream. To be visionary. To step out. Get hold of that mustard seed of faith. You know that dream that seems really weird? Probably isn't. It's weird to everybody else, but if God has spoken, it's not weird. It might just be the key that releases something in your community, in your street, in your school, in the place that you go about your business. <sighs> Would you bow your heads with me? Father, would you help us to get hold of your word today, Lord Jesus? Would you help us to dream big over our cities, over the towns, over our streets, over the communities, over the worlds that we're involved in? Not just dream, but Lord, partner with you in seeing hope come to it, which is you. Oh, Jesus, that we would just not be hearers, but we would be doers of your word. Father God, would you quicken our hearts now to the dreams and visions that you've put upon us to, to maybe wake them up again, to maybe start giving birth to them. Almighty oh, God, just use us this week for your kingdom. I ask in your precious name, before you lift your heads, maybe just take a moment. What's the Holy Spirit saying to you? That one note or that one thing that's stuck in your mind. What's the Holy Spirit saying to you? And I want you to take it a little bit further. What are you going to do with what the Holy Spirit is saying to you? Maybe you need to talk to somebody who's an expert. Maybe you need to talk to somebody that can help facilitate it. Maybe you need to talk to me. 
If we're going to be effective for the kingdom of God, we can't just be prompted by the Spirit. We have to engage. So just ask him, what's he saying? And what have you got to do? Now we're going to sing our final song. Stay in the presence of the Lord if you need to spend some time with the Holy Spirit. Keep working with the Holy Spirit. It's not important what I'm saying. God, I look to you. You can stand, you can sing, sit, however you feel comfortable. Turn that up for me, fellas. week, look to him. Over your dreams, over your visions, over that situation, look to him. Get intimate with him and he'll reveal the way forward. Give me vision. Maybe you need to make this song your prayer. Maybe open your arms to the Lord, just putting this into you. Just what to do situation, your business, the place where you work, God reigns. No matter how tough it gets, God reigns. Yes, he does. finances, over your marriage, over your relationships, over your family, our God reigns. Yes, Lord, reign in our life. those visions, our God reigns. He knows the way forward. You hold keys to the kingdom.
Let's give him praise this morning because he deserves it. Give him a round of applause. Thank him. Praise him. Hallelujah. Our God reigns. Amen. Just take your seats for a minute. I just want to give you some quick notices and they are going to be very, very quick. Uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning. You've been very, very welcome online. You're very welcome. Firstly, there's no better together tomorrow. Is that right? No better together tomorrow for you women. Um, normally it's a ladies meeting, but we're going into sort of bank holiday, so you've got a week off. We've got no Wednesday prayer meeting. That's not happening this week either. Um, Thursday, we started, last Thursday, we started the well-being journey. And that was available online, but because of the licensing, for me to help, or for you to watch the well-being journey on Thursday, I need to email you the link. Me or Sheila will email you the link. So if you want that link, and I think it's important that you go through the well-being journeys from a big church in Peterborough and hope to get to put it together, that you email me. Some of you got the, your email address. Just email me so I've got it, and then I can get a list together. Even if you think I've got it and I should email, just email me anyway. If you want that link, email me, and this week we'll send the, the link out between us. Um, some resources that can help you with that, actually. Firstly, there's this book written about hope. And maybe you want to read about hope. But this is more for your neighbours or people in your workplace that are struggling to realise what happened last year. And it's still happening. This little book talks about hope. Talks about Jesus. Talks about there is hope. So you can get them on the door on the way out there. This booklet here, if you are following the well-being journey, there's another little booklet you can pick up. This is a blue one. That was a black one. This will just help you. Each time that you watch it, there's a couple of pages that will prompt some questions, get you thinking. Pick yourself one of them up. And then the last thing that we have is uh, there's a couple of Hope magazines that you might want to give to neighbours or read yourself. We're done. I just want to mention our community shop. If you need to buy things, Christine will look after you. Christine's doing a great job there. Now, normally it's £2 for 10 items, and that's still the case. However, today, and we never do this, but we're going to do this today. Um, don't worry, Chris. Don't worry. I, I, know, I know the business plan. We've been given a lot of turkey mints. 2% turkey mints. It's free on Slimming World, apparently. But we'll sell them, Chris, at 50p a packet, won't we? If people just want them 50p, I'm looking at the shop manager, I don't want to be wrong, because you'll slap my legs later. So you can buy one item, because we don't normally sell it in individual items, because people say, can I just have a bag of crisps? No. Can I buy a can of pop? No. It's two items for 10, or you could just put your two quid in and just get one item anyway. But we'll do it with the mints. It's great mints, 2% mints, turkey mints, 50p. Chris will go there now. Nath, come and do me a favour. Pray over us, bless us, and then we're going home. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your presence here this morning. Lord, I pray that you will go with us, whatever situation we're in, Lord, that you would just be our rear guard. Lord, that you, you, you're always fighting for us, and Lord, we just thank you for that this morning, that you just, you're, you're just all around us. You surround us, Lord, with your love. And Lord, I just pray that as we leave this place this morning, we will go in your name and we would just shine your light in every situation that we find ourselves in, Lord, that we will shine your love. So I just pray your protection over us now in the name of Jesus. Amen.